In this short lecture, we are going to go through the parameter estimation for the binomial distribution. So the learning objective is to take data and be able to estimate the parameter for the binomial distribution. And further take, uh, use this to calculate a confidence interval for this parameter, both under what we call normal observation, that is where you observe both positive and negative results, and extreme observations, where that's why where, where you either observe only zeros or only ones. So this is binary data. And binary data is either written as a sequence of zeros and ones, or yes or no's, or blue or white, or how many trials there's conducted, that's n, and then how many of them which were positive. So we have the same representation. Uh, it's a different representation for the same data here. And we see that there is only a few things that characterize these data. There is the number of tests, how many that is, they are deemed positive, that's called x, and then the probability of x, which we call p. The parameter for the binomial distribution is this p, where we say, well, what is the probability of a single positive outcome? And if we, if we don't know but base it on data, we simply estimate this p by the frequency. So if I observe 6 out of 18, I would say, well, the best guess I have on the probability parameter for the binomial distribution is simply 6 over 18. So that's p hat, and very intuitive. If I want to uh, put a confidence bound around this p hat, I use the central Demer theorem to calculate the standard deviation or the standard error for this p, and that is simply the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat divided by n. And you see here that the larger your sample size is, the lower the standard error. And in order to construct a confidence interval, you say, well, that is positioned centered around p hat plus minus a set fractile and then this standard error. In the case where we have either x being 0 or x being n, we would get p hat being 0 or 1. And in that case, you are not capable of calculating the standard error because one of uh, the parts here is going to be 0. So you don't get any standard error and you're not able to uh, compute a confidence interval using the central Glimmer theorem formula. So if we take the case where x is 0, we would say, well, the confidence band for p would start at 0 because we obviously observe 0 out of n. So the lowest possible value of p is probably 0. So the upper bound, then we say, well, can we find the highest p where the outcome, which is the probability of x equals to 0, or in the other case where x equals to n, is still likely. So let's do two examples with these, um, with these two different data sets. The first one is we have a triangle test where we have 40 observations and 20 of them being positive. So we want to calculate p hat and a confidence bound for this example. The other one is where we sample five uh, samples in our factory in order to uh, determine whether there is bacterial growth and zero of them is observed with bacterial growth. And in this case we would like to say what is the probability of observing growth uh, under the observation of these data. So example one. Example one. We have x being binomially distributed with m times p, and we have the observation that x is equal to 20 and n equal to 40. So p hat is equal to 20 over 40 equals to a half. And then we would like to calculate the standard error on p, and that is equal to a half 1 minus a half, that is p hat, times 1 minus p hat, divided by 40. And that is equal to 
0.08. Then we would like to construct a confidence interval for this p, and that is p hat plus minus a set fractile with 1 minus alpha half, that is the coverage, how large should the interval be, times this value up here, this p. So if we chuck this one in, we will get 1 half plus minus, and I would like to compute a 95% confidence interval, and the lookup in the C value table gives me that the C value for this confidence bound is 1.96, and then times this 0.08, and that equals to a half plus minus 0.15, which means that I'll have a confidence bound going from 0.35, up to uh, 0.65. So I observe a frequency of a half and my estimate, the best guess is a half, the probability, the parameter for the binomial uh, distribution is a half and I put a confidence bound around it from 0.35 up to 0.65. Example 2 there we have x being the number of bacteria, uh, the number of vials with bacterial growth. A vial can either have bacterial growth or not. And so it's binomially distributed and we have five samples and we observe x being equal to zero. So now the question is, what is p? Well, we estimate p by the frequency, so that's x divided by n, and that's 0 divided by 5. So naturally, the best guess we have on our parameter in this distribution is 0. Now we would like to construct a confidence bound around this 0, but we cannot use the central demotherian in this case because the variance defined from p hat is going to be 0, which is not really true. So the the central level theorem assumption is in this case invalid. What we do instead is we say, well, what is the probability of observing what we observe? And we try to figure out if we can put in a p, a parameter which still returns likely results. So what we observe is x equal to zero. And if we just go back to the, to the slides, we will see that we here have the point probability uh, for the binomial distribution. The probability of x being equal to x is this formula. So n over x, p to the power of x, and 1 minus p to the power of n minus x. So we try to use that one in this case. So p equal to x equal to p of x equal to 0 is n over 0 and then p to the power of 0, and 1 minus p to the power of n minus 0. What we see is that this guy over here, that's 1, this guy here is 1, so what we end out with is 1 minus p to the power of n. And this is the probability of observing the data that we see, that is 1 minus p to the power of n. And now we wish to know what is p and we wish to estimate the confidence bound such that a p-value here returns likely results. And likely results is in, is in this case 1 minus alpha. So can I calculate a p where this is still larger than some proportion? If we just rearrange this guy, we say that this is the same as 1 minus p is larger than 1 minus alpha to the power of 1 over n. So that means that p should be less than 1 minus 1 minus alpha to the power of 1 over n. In the case where alpha is equals to 0 0.05, you'll get that this number is 1 minus 0 0.95 to the power of 1 over 5, which is equal to 
which is equal to 0 0.01. So in this case, we will say that the confidence interval for this parameter p goes from 0, which is actually in this case the lower bound and also the most likely p hat, and up to 0 0.01. So if P, the probability of observing bacteria, is 1%, it is still likely to observe 0 out of 5 observations.